it's never been like, okay, here's a formula. This formula makes sense. This is how you write a song. I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to put my sort of flavor into it. It's always been like, I I have to work from some other subterranean place and try and kind of wrangle it in to make it moderately understandable to anybody else's ear, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Uh, well, I appreciate you uh, doing this. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so my, happy to do it. My name is Adam, and this podcast is about you and your journey in music. Obviously, you have a really successful acting career, but I'd love to focus on your your music and this new album and uh, how you get to where you are now. Great. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, first, I always start with where were you born and raised? So I was born in Seattle. Um and I uh, lived there until I was five. And it's such a such an amazing city, Seattle, like such a beautifully integrated city with nature. Um, so I have this um, really strong sense of like forest and mountain and water in my in my core being. But then we moved to L.A. when I was five and um, L.A. does have the ocean and it does have pretty incredible nature but like where we lived and what I had access to was um was not great so um the, I had the, I had um a, a feeling like we we left this green paradise for like grayness basically and I felt that way for like 30 years <laughs> yeah, I could I can relate with that for sure I recently moved to Nashville my family and I moved to Nashville oh right yeah I'm from San Diego so it was like going from what you're talking about i mean obviously san diego has some beautiful parts but it's nothing like the greenery here and, I, and i'm sure up in yeah. in washington where it's just it's just such a different vibe and uh yeah yeah you, well, you can get out you can get out of 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 the city in nashville and just get into like beautiful woods and well yeah nature we're like in the suburbs and it's just crazy to, to see we've only been here since february of last year to see, see like the you know fall and like the autumn leaves mm-hmm. falling yeah and seasons it's like whoa these, you know it snows here it's just so bizarre and to yeah. see these trees that are naked at one point and you're like i don't know if are all those leaves gonna grow back and then it's just like totally you know all bad it's just so cool to see the seasons changing and everything else yeah yeah, it's, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you don't have seasons in Southern California at all. <laughs> right. yeah. No, no. Oh. yeah, it, it, it's a different kind of marking of time, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. The when you don't have seasons, like you, you don't realize it when you're just when that's all you know. But when you do live somewhere else, then you realize that you mark time between, you know, the 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 the, the changing nature, like you said, the leaves. And um, I think it's really important for your soul to kind of register that the like the the sort of cycles of nature and for kids to realize that as well. Um, Even if you, you know, if it's just experiencing it by trips or whatever, but just to see that life changes and things can completely seem barren and like they're never going to ever grow again. And then three or four months later, there's tiny buds and, you know. It's yeah, it's so amazing. It's Important. definitely a, a different. Yeah, I, my my youngest son is six, so it's he's gonna more grow up as like a southern kid, seeing these things and these experiences. I have a fourteen year old who remembers San Diego obviously a lot more than he than my younger son will. So we went back to San Diego for my sister's wedding last weekend or weekend before last, and just had been a while, like almost a year since we've been back in Southern California and you go back and it's like, wow, this is gray. And there's not a lot of, yeah. not a lot of greenery or nature going on here. Yeah. It's, it's just yeah, so it's interesting kind of foxy kind of. as well, isn't it? San Diego sure. quite like, yeah, there's lots yeah. of strip malls and not a lot of. Yeah, exactly. It was just bizarre to be back and be like, whoa, this is like, oh, wow, this is so much different, but. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Funny, so at yeah. five, you, you land in LA. Five, I landed in LA and stayed there. Um, until I was 30 and got Fantastic Beasts. And then I started to kind of live between, I mean, I I had lived in England a bit, but like for, you know, a couple of months at a time, but mm-hmm. that was like six months at a time. And I got used to living here. Um, and there were elements that I just really 
loved about the way that like the sort of the mindset and um also the way they they approach raising kids here there's like just a like, really nice community community feeling um and then I was going back and forth between here and New York and um I wanted to to make a change and I decided to move here full-time that's fantastic yeah and how, how did you get into music obviously acting is a big part of your life but um was music something that you grew up with it, it was to a degree music um my dad is, is is very musical there was music in the house but it wasn't like I don't know so I think there's some households where music is like it prevalent and it wasn't in mine certainly not in my mom's house um uh but I saw a kid that I knew um he was taking singing lessons I went to a showcase I saw him sing and I was like whoa all these kids are so brave I had sung once in a like in a play uh, a few months before that and had been surprised by this like loud thing that I had in me because I barely spoke um mm -hmm. at that point um loud and flat it was really not a music <laughs> I was not a natural singer um but yeah that I've always just loved this sort of the spirit of what singing is rather than um I never had like a Mariah Carey voice or like I grew up with people that are like into pop, you know, that was like mm. what I was surrounded with. I didn't really, I wasn't exposed to like the, the kind of music that I love now. I wasn't exposed to, to different kinds of music. It was all very mainstream and I didn't, I felt like an alien and I was never going to make sense in that. So I started to write songs to try and at least find a way to communicate. Um, and also to find a way to work with my voice because other songs just felt like, yeah, like I was trying to wrestle my voice into, into shapes it didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. um, and songwriting was really liberating for me. And the, and I had always written stories and stuff like that. Writing has always been something that's been really, um, yeah, it was really important to me. And um, to man marry that with... Um, melody to marry that with the kind of world that you can create through music. Um, that was it for me when I realized that was like a possibility. Were you li were you listening to the more of the bigger pop songs at the time, and or were you oh, more yeah. fascinated by I mean, your your sound? At least in this new record, is more of it's got like a folk vibe, but it's also like more of it's definitely not a big pop anthem. And obviously, with the storyline behind it, um, yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't present so, but um, when you were like trying to, were you trying to emulate those songs early and like as a, you know, younger girl. And then yeah. when you were writing, was it, okay, I need to write something. Like you said, you had a right to kind of work with your, your voice. Was it coming out more of the folk lane or like how, how, how are those songs sounding? Do you remember? They were, um, yeah, they were definitely more folk definitely not pop anthems whatsoever i did try and write a few like that but i just didn't know how to i didn't even know how to write a song they all they weren't really like songs at the beginning they were sort of meandering poems mm -hmm. um and i was not happy with them i was not like <laughs> i was really frustrated by what i could hear on the radio or on cds or you know, I could be at CDs at the time or cassettes or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, so old. Um, but <laughs> hey, I'm older than you. I saw your birthday. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, great. That's fantastic. <laughs> I, and I was speaking to somebody the other day who's almost as old as my for my as my record. Oh, like, interesting. Like my first record. First, like, like yeah. yeah, like not that many years older than the amount of time it's been since I released my first I was like oh wow <laughs> um <laughs> it's a wild feeling um um yeah but like the, I, I think with songwriting what my experience has been with it is that like I, I'm, I'm pretty much unable to um write a song that sounds like anything else so what I've had to do is drill into like dr drill into who I am and what I 
feel it should be. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, 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 it's never been like, okay, here's a formula. This formula makes sense. This is how you write a song. I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to put my sort of flavor into it. It's always been like, I I have to work from some other subterranean place and try and kind of wrangle it in to make it moderately understandable to anybody else's ear. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. So it's just, it's taken, um, it's taken a long time. Like my my first album, I definitely was still like living in a more pop place, but um, but also the songs are like I, w- I wrote songs about forest rangers and fish and stuff like that. So they weren't. They, I've never really been like a pop <laughs> pop anthem person, even yeah. though my pop. Well, with like even prior to that that record coming out or the the first album that you put out um like were you pursue was music something you always wanted to pursue or were you doing acting and music at the same time like like how like how did it kind of start like where were you what were you more focused on when when you you know like you're in high school or whatever oh music definitely okay. um my my mom had um had sort of put my photo my mom was an actress and she had put my photo in a um in with her headshots getting like looking for an agent and I had gotten a manager when I was like really young and went out for auditions and um but my heart wasn't into it and I was also really freaked out because at the at that point and it still kind of continues to this day but like you kind of had to pick your lane so like if you were if you wanted to be considered a serious musician, then you can t- touch acting for the 10th mm, of all. Cause sure. it just immediately meant you were, you had to be absolutely crap at one of them, you know, like, right. like if you, if you were um, an actress, then it, like it, by default, you were a terrible musician and like, and like people just wouldn't take you seriously one or the other. So I, I was like, I don't, I, my nightmare was that I would um, have some kind of, I would get some kind of job. I'd have no control over the job that I would get. And then I, I would get it um, like in some stupid sitcom or something like that. And then I would never be able to be a real musician. I was like, right, my, you can uh, pursue music as you wanted to. Yeah, which is, I mean, it's sad that that's the, you know, that was such a fear. I had so much fear growing up and so many ideas of what I could and couldn't do and what was possible and what was not possible. And I'm not really sure that all of those are accurate, but that was just mm-hmm. like, I well, it was the Yeah, I, I totally, I agree 100%. And I even see, you can still kind of see it now with like social media influencers. It's like, Oh, and then, you know, they'll put a song on. It's like, oh, so now you're a songwriter, but maybe they've been writing music their whole life and they just kind of yeah. landed in this, you know, Instagram world or whatever it may be. Yeah. And then, well, I've always loved music and I've been doing this, but just this other thing happened. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm still yeah. pursuing, I've always been pursuing this thing, but uh, it, it's interesting because once you're kind of put up on the, in the, in the light, it, it it people are going to just know you as that and go oh well oh so now you think you're a, a musician and you're like no I've always been a musician yeah yeah and then but you're always on the back foot because you're like no but wait I've always been you know as opposed yeah. to just like oh just listen to music <laughs> yeah you're always on like the defense fine yeah like I, I yeah um mm. I'm grateful that I had many years as a musician before I even tried acting um <laughs> and you know, so that was established. Um, but, you know, lots of people that um, s- saw me and Beast had no idea I was a musician, you know, and it was like a real surprise, which is fine. Yeah, it's lovely. I'm I'm too old to care now. I cared a lot when <laughs> I was like at the beginning of my career and like, ah, you know, I've got to control everything. Like otherwise everything's going to go wrong. But now I'm just like, oh, I'm just, it's fine. It's, it's fine. But it's, it's fine. interesting because the people I've seen you and Beast, you had three albums out before you were even on the show. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's like yeah. that was already a light. Your life was already in the world of music. And yeah, you had oh, I'd already had a like a major career meltdown. Yeah, deal, already, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Album. Like it wasn't. Uh, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. been, on, been on a major label, been dropped by a major label, like old, old news. Lots, you know, lots of, yeah. lots of life under the bridge at that well, point. Well, tell me about that. That the project was a fine frenzy. And is mm-hmm. 
and now you're just going by your name, correct? With the yeah. new album? Okay. Yeah. So when you start that, like, was that the first project that you really had that, you know, started to kind of get some legs and do something? Obviously, you signed a major label and all of that. But prior to that project, what did you have any other music, like a band or anything like that going on prior? Yeah, and thank God it's only like moderately ever been heard by anybody in the world because it's so bad. <laughs> the I mean, one before Fine Frenzy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm like, I mean, that, that stuff isn't bad. I didn't know. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no. That's, I mean, I was young and I've got my own like, you know, thing. It's always hard. You, know, you look back at pictures of yourself and you're like, why do I wear the outfit? You know, it's like that. <laughs> but like, why did, why did I do that? But, you know, the, for Fine Frenzy, there's that's like, there's a special place in my heart for that because that, I, there was a lot about that that was special but no the, but the band I had before that was um awful um I told my my boyfriend when we were in um LA uh, we found one of my CDs my uh, my original band I was 16 you know yeah. LA. um and I was like okay look like we can listen to this on one condition like I'm not saying this is bad as like a, oh, this is bad. So, you know, like, but it's really good. But to right. tell me it's good, you know like what I mean? Like, oh, is that? Like, this is yeah, bad, yeah, yeah. I no, want to hear I'm you not... tell me how great it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is, it's bad. And I don't know if there's anything <laughs> redeeming to it. And he's like, oh, I'm sure it's not that bad. And then we listen to it and he's like, yeah, no, it was, <laughs> that's pretty bad. He's like, but what's amazing about that is how far you've come. I was like, wow, that's bad. Uh, well, that's a solid <laughs> answer. I mean, good for him with that response instead of just being like, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, he's, far he's, come. <laughs> he's a smart, he's a smart cookie. But yeah, yeah, it was, it, 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 I think that now that I've like lived enough, had enough career, like, you know a, a ride of it i i'm i'm much i take myself much less seriously than i did when i was younger and i and i'm much less ashamed of having started out like rotten terrible so that i could grow you know i'm like less ashamed of this because i i always had this idea that like artists came out into the world like perfectly formed and never did anything embarrassing you know um mm -hmm. And That's like, what I've loved about this do. this podcast and like learning people's journeys and being like, oh wow, like everyone has a start, right? I mean, yeah, I, somebody had. There was always there's probably a hundred bad songs before the first good one that anyone has ever written. No, hundred is, like, is like hundred is like if you did a hundred, then you're you're like a magician okay thousands. <laughs> yeah. yeah so many unlistenable songs yeah and 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 though that's that actually even though you don't realize it at the time like that forms your foundation for who you are and and it's the, the like the seeking the striving the continual digging the frustration with not being um the artist that you are not being able to reflect what you want to reflect and like in your art looking at it going oh it's like so far away from what I hear it to be that's like that is actually the real artistry and the um and what leads you into the 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 the, the, the stuff that's different you know mm -hmm. like that, that 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 takes a risk that's edgy because you're like pushing through resistance like mm -hmm. I, I think that's undervalued especially like in our in our culture because everything's so fast you know it's just like make stuff yeah. put it out get it out da, 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 da. Yeah. Like um minute clip this is like it's just it has to be just so fast but like actually like stepping back reflecting cringing <laughs> digging and like and and un, un um unearthing that I think that's like a really important process. Mm -hmm. So like not having everything perfected, not having your zits filtered out, like that's that's where the that's where art is, I think. No, I completely agree. And I, I think to some sense too, that's kind of why the the TikTok of the world has like kind of got a go in the beginning because it was just like oh wow these are just people holding up their phones and kind of just living their yeah. lives like 
you have this behind yeah. the curtain kind of look to everyone, right? I mean, yeah. Oh, that's where you know Allison lives. That's where so and my favorite artists they that's their couch. Like that's crazy to see, but like it's and it's yeah. just like kind of this unfiltered. They have a couch. Like, yeah, right. Like they don't live like in some gold palace. Like what is going on? Like you just yeah, have, have yeah. things that you would. Well, oh, he has that on the wall. Like weird. I would have never. You know, just things like that you see. Yeah. I don't even so know cool. what's on my wall. That's a pretty we cool don't painting. we don't actually like that we i mean it's rothko <laughs> and rothko's great but we don't actually like i don't i think it's in here just because it's something on the wall <laughs> <laughs> it works yeah um but that's yeah well tell me when do when do you start a fine frenzy and like where were you at in your career when that began and the project you were talking about prior was that something that you were really going full force like trying to succeed with that and then did that kind of end and how did you Kind of continue on with your career um yeah the project that i had before no i mean it was just like just trying to do anything you know just trying to learn how to be in a band okay. um the fine frenzy definitely was like um very motivated to um be heard and like have a place in the world somehow get the f out of burbank um mm -hmm. and um yeah i i um I don't know. I, I, I don't really know how it all happened. It's such a fluke how any of these things come to be, you know, how you can like somehow get a record deal. It seems like actually impossible. No, I don't really understand, but, um, <laughs> but my, yeah, my life shifted kind of overnight um, no, one person wanted to sign me basically like nobody else, everybody, all these other labels were kind of like circling, but like this, this one guy the he who happened to be the head of Virgin Records, just like, yeah, I'm signing you. Was um, there like a, like, were you playing around LA quite a bit? Like how, how were people hearing about you? Were you just doing a lot of performing or? I was playing around LA a bit, but, um, but no, I had a, I had I'd, I'd recorded some music and um and had like met some people who knew some people and so we were kind of sending it out mm -hmm. and um and then people were like coming to my parents' garage to listen to us play and yeah, it was just a strange time. It's really weird mm -hmm. that that all happened. <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, yeah, so then I got signed. Then I spent a tumultuous seven or eight years on that label with lots of people coming and going, people buying the record label, people leaving the record label, um, funky stuff happening. Mm -hmm. Some really brilliant people, some people that didn't get me at all and I didn't get, and that was tough, you know, mm -hmm. it's hard to like be at the mercy of whoever's coming in and out not everybody's going to be fit but some people were like absolutely amazing um and i wish i had listened to more <laughs> um uh yeah and then uh and then at the the kind of like final juncture of another buyout of the label i didn't even meet the new people and and then um i, I kind of wanted to be somewhere else and it just parted ways and that was fine that was fine at the time um and I needed to to take a step back from music for a little for a little bit because I kind of broke my heart being yeah. in it that's when I started acting and then I um didn't expect to work and then I almost immediately got a job on transparent which was this like amazing first job to be in because it was such a great show but also like such a huge societal shifter sure. conversation opener um and and then uh yeah and then I um I was making music but I just didn't really know what I wanted to say or what I wanted to make and I had some side projects and they didn't they didn't manage to see the light of day, which was kind of a shame in some ways, but I was just not in a great headspace music wise. And then um, I got beasts. And at the same time as I got beasts, I started um, making music with a producer called Ali Chant in Bristol, who is 
lovely and wanted to like go on a journey of exploration with me. And mm -hmm. that's when I decided to go by my own name and okay. I self-released two EPs, um, made all kind of in and around, um, also filming Fantastic Beasts and it's a very creative time and also like a personally quite difficult time. Um, I was going through a lot while those movies were happening. Um, uh, but it was really good and important to return to music. Mm -hmm. And um, that kind of set the stage for going in and doing this album. Um, I, I had kind of like been putting music kind of a bit second because mm -hmm. acting had been a bit safer, I guess, for me. But then right. and it was um, working. I mean, you're, it was paying yeah. your bills, and, and it was, it was, yeah. I could see why you would do that in that sense, right? Yeah, but my soul needed music, and mm -hmm. so when I went through my when my partner and I um, went through miscarriage, and I just like was a, a absolutely like flattened emotionally and and um couldn't compartmentalize anything couldn't um put stuff in the box couldn't I couldn't get it together I started to make music and it was like making music like touching into the reason I make music the reason I'm a musician like it was such a visceral need I didn't second guess um like the style of it or the shape of it it was all just coming like fast and furious and clear um and it really even though it was such a difficult sad experience it weirdly like brought it brought so much healing and um brought me back to music as like doing it properly you know like really giving myself to it and allowing myself to put my full heart forward mm -hmm. with it um without kind of immediately pulling back yeah. you said with the the fr the first couple of eps you had a lot kind of going on where you, you do you think you can use the music as like a way to process stuff pretty is that what you were doing even then on those first couple of eps I've always used music to process, yeah. Um, because when I started songwriting when I was really young, I had absolutely no um, language for my emotions. I didn't, mm -hmm. and I didn't have, like, I didn't really have friendships that I could really get down to the bottom of things because I was holding a lot of things quite close to my chest I didn't really ever confide in anybody about things that were going on mm -hmm. and so music was always sort of like my secret code even if you couldn't really tell what was in a song like I would embed things in songs oh sure um, interesting and then you know as I've gotten older it's less and less coded mm -hmm. basically I'm like more and more willing to be seen to be honest to be open to be vulnerable uh, i was gonna say that, that was the word i was gonna use it's just like a, such a vulnerable record i mean mm. when i listened to yeah. it the fir i listened to it the first time through and i didn't read anything about it i was just like okay this is a this is a cool album it's it i i didn't know i didn't understand the storyline as directly as i did when i read about it and then re-listened to it and like having you know a, a six-year-old son and then you're going back and hearing like uh you know towards the end of the album like the last three or four songs it's just like like it you can mm. just you are so vulnerable on the album i couldn't believe it mm. and yeah. i just yeah it, it's it's such a it's a a great record um and that was it difficult for you to just to get all of that out i mean you did talk about how you use it to process your emotions but to like now you have you you get these songs out and it's like okay now i'm gonna display them to to the world so to speak mm. I mean, when you started writing at what point did you realize like oh this is gonna be an album or was there like a song that started it off like okay like this is how i'm processing what happened mm. here's the song about it 
let, I'm going to continue on with this. Was there like a moment that you can remember? I think like quite early on. Yeah, I didn't have very much. I think I had still come the night hand on my heart, which is not released on the album, but will be released later. And um, Mary of the Willows. And I didn't really see how they connected particularly, but mm -hmm. I just knew that there was a lot more to explore. And it was pretty clear that that was, it was going to be an album. I wanted to create like an entire album, not just an EP. And I didn't want to write like two or three songs about this and then write about other things. Like I wanted to just write about this because I could feel that it was going to bring up a lot and I didn't want anything else to touch it. Just wanted to, to be about healing going through it and then healing um and like the what i what i what i learned and what i experienced from this that it was a surprise is that the more vulnerable i've been the more open i've been the more strength i feel the more um it's like strangely less scary mm -hmm. almost like i'm less scared of being found out or having my code understood like I just want people to understand mm -hmm. and with me. Um, and, and, you know, this album, I don't, um, I don't want it to feel like it's restricted to my story. And I like that you listened to it without having, without knowing about it the first time, because like, it's a, it is such a common experience, but not everybody has gone through it. And, um, God, I would hope that not everybody would have to go through it. It's so terrible. Um, mm. it, I mean, it's, it's terrible and it's survivable by more than survivable. It's, it's, a, it's such a strange thing. I mean, to me, it was like a strangely important gift as part of my preparation for being a parent. Um, that I, I don't know. It's, yeah, it was just part of my journey anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think the more honest I am, the less fearful I am. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really nice. Mm -hmm. It's nice to feel that way. Um, yeah, I don't want to hide anymore. Not that, Ooh. I mean, like, yeah, it's not like I was like, I don't know, completely concealed, but I think that this is just, it's just more vulnerable than I've let myself be. Oh, it's completely, and especially to have, and you have eyes on you and you have an audience and, and to be able to just say, hey, this happened to me. Like, yeah. I mean, that's big in, in itself. And not only that, yeah. it's like you write a whole album about it and um, just the, the healing and everything going, like you listen to the record and it's just, and I love that you did a whole album. I will say that too. Not a lot of people are putting out full albums anymore. And then to focus on the subject matter you did, and then to go through the album and listen to it like cohesively, like how it's supposed to sound. And it's just, there's something about that as well. Um, mm, to hear thanks. that still comes at night, it still come the night was the first song that you wrote from it too. Like, I yeah. mean, to have that, obviously the title of the record, but that's the song where it, for me, I mean, it was come on baby. And then that one, I was like, oh, wow. Like this is like, I mean, when after I had read it, like that's what really like hit to me at, when it got to that point in the album, mm -hmm. and then it comes into Meteor Shower, where it's just like a totally different, like sonically different than the rest of the record, right? So yeah. I just I, yeah, um, to hear that you wrote that one first though, um, was that difficult? Like how? I mean, I don't want to say like how soon after, but like, like was we able to process and start writing music? Was it like? Was there a lot? I mean, was there a lot of time there to sit and go, like, be able to process, or because you process your emotions with music, was it kind of quick to just go straight to that? I mean, so we were, I guess, in context, we were staying um, at a friend's cottage, um, which didn't have Wi-Fi, um, oh. and it was so beautiful there, quiet. Um, my, my friend's cottage did and also like you could walk up the hill to make a phone call but like you couldn't really like you, you could sit and like 
scroll Netflix, you know. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> So, was that it? Was the 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 pandemic happened yet, or at this point not yet? It had, yeah. Okay, yeah, we, so you were there, like we were quarantined we were there. there. Gotcha. From the pandemic, because okay. had, I had my friend. You know, I was I was pregnant, and my friend said come because okay. we didn't know what the risks were for for pregnancy. Sure. Um, and um, yeah and and like it was days it was days that I started writing it and um yeah I, I didn't even really know what I was doing to be honest I was just like the days were long and I was physically recovering and mentally reeling and had like a crappy guitar there and so it was like something I could do because I brought one book and I read it and you know I was just like and every part of me was so tired and so it was just something I could just like sit and also trying to kind of like put some kind of anchor because I just felt like I was like awash mm -hmm. um, and music does that because you you take all these like this amorphous emotion and distill it into words and melody and it like you're never going to pinpoint an entire emotion you're never going to pinpoint an entire situation but you can like grab like a little sliver and at least it's like pinning something into the ground um and going oh yeah that's 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 something that's something i can tangible something i can hold on to it's not just it's not just like on me you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah so that that's when i started writing but i didn't write loads and it that that was like a slow process of writing that song and then you ended up what going and recording them all later on or after you had them like or I had a few of them together and we're like, okay, this, I want to make this an album. Yeah. So I had the, I had those three and I had come on baby. Um, and, um, and then I contacted Chris Tyson, who's a friend of my partners. Um, and he's just a, an incredible musician and producer and like, lovely lovely human being and I was like do you want to just take a chance with me and just see if we can write some songs and he was up for it and he gathered these incredible Welsh twins um they're uh, Lloyd and Alex Haynes they're 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 just like ridiculous musicians like not musicians and um and uh and this great engineer Alex Kopartrick and we were, just went to Wales middle of Wales just cheap studio um it's a great studio but wales was just like middle of nowhere which is right. what I, and we like lived in there for a week but half of that week um i was trying to finish up an album that i had been working on earlier so it was like three and a half days that we wrote the entire rest of the album and put the foundation in for everything wow yeah it, it's like, and you said you had another album that you're working on too there's another yeah. bit yeah. to this oh my gosh yeah, yeah yeah like loads of stuff but but it was difficult for me to concentrate on that one because I was so consumed by this and so that's sure. just taken but um but yeah I mean we, like it's just so little time and we just worked all night and wrote and it was just so natural and everything was just like moving and making sense and everybody just sort of understood where to go next it was just incredible incredible teamwork and symbiosis and um yeah I don't know I guess that like something I want to be written you know like yeah, I could feel it everyone could feel it and um it was just such a blessing and so like so much laughter as well I was crying like loads when I was well, I can imagine I, well, absolute mess but and then the boys were so kind and gentle and just gave me a lot of space and a lot of hugs. And, um, but in between that, like just so everyone was so silly and that was also really healing. And I think gave imbued 
these songs with what I wanted them to have. I like if you are going through something very painful and you listen to something that is just like heavy with pain, I don't think it's helpful. For me, it's not helpful. Um, I need some light. I need at least mm-hmm. bit like sparks of light to poke through for, for me to feel like there's something to like look towards because I've got enough pain. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to have, have there be joy in it. And, and there's, there's joy in the making of it. And that's really important. That was really important. Well, like I said, I, I think the album is amazing. The, there's a part in Peaches. Is that a xylophone? Like there's this cool like riff happening. Yeah. That's a synth. I love that. Oh, it's a synth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was listening to it. I'm like, I listened to it like four or five times. I was trying to figure out what it was, but now, okay. Now that you said synth, it sounded almost like it was like a xylophone going like. I mean, it's, I, it's some kind of, it might be a sample or something actually. Okay. I mean, I remember me, I remember us finding it, Chris and I in the studio, but I don't remember what, where, what it was. Where it came from. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> Uh, like yeah. I said, I love the record. Um, and thank you so much for for doing this and and talking with me. I know it's late where you are, and you've been up, and you've had things happen at, at the home. And <laughs> <laughs> so I I appreciate you want you know I, coming back and doing this. It really means a lot. Thank you so much. Oh, such a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much, and thanks for for being patient with me and all my. Design. No, no, no worries <laughs> at all. Um, I do have one more quick question before I let yeah. you go. I know you will want to go to bed and (laughs) everything else here Uh, but I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists oh yeah um I I think uh the the world gives pretty clear signals that you need to be in a category you need to be like other people in order for like for there to be validation or for you to be understood like the industry is quite category categorizing where like it's like well what do you like who are you you know and and I, I feel like it can really discourage unique voices and it can discourage being different um not fitting into the box I'd say it's a harder road in some ways to, to like really follow your voice and to, and to be truly who you are. And that's obviously like always going to be a work in progress because we're not, we're not like statues, you know, we're evolving. Mm -hmm. Um, Like being, being, be courageous, be, be bold, put your soul out there, stand up the edge don't play it safe because I think that that kind of energy that kind of that kind of courageous um vulnerability is what we need to to deal with so much overwhelming stuff in the world like when you see somebody truly being in their own voice and like standing in their own power and their own uniqueness it it has a ripple effect other people see that and want to be their own fullest self and I think that's the responsibility of artists and it's just not something that's like really um there's not like a lot of value put on that from like an industry standpoint necessarily but I think it's really I think it's really imperative it's our responsibility as artists to not play it safe but to be brave. Bring it back, we'll